Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. I'm a comic. Yeah, yeah. That is, blah, blah, blah. Donald Trump is the GOP nominee for president. That's the joke. <laughs> was Trump a palooza? The first day, the third wife spoke, and then the second day, the daughter of the second wife spoke, and then also the, the son of the first wife, and then the third day, the, the other son of the first wife, and then the fourth day, the daughter of the first wife introduced the fertile and fickle man himself, <laughs> and they were joined by the son of the third wife. So it was just all Trump all the time. <laughs> and they were all blonde. Did you notice that? They were all, even the ones who weren't blonde were blonde. Hey, now. I mean that in a good way. <laughs> but it was white. <laughs> if the RNC had an official meal, it would have been mashed potatoes on a paper plate with a side of leeks. <laughs> I felt so bad for that one black delegate that they kept following around and <laughs> they tried to make him look like a crowd by using different camera angles and put him in different costumes and they had hats and beards and stuff. And poor baby. Oh, Pence. I mean, he, he himself, we're not telling tales out of school, Pence himself said he's not the most exciting politician in the world, <laughs> which is understatement. I mean, <laughs> he makes vanilla look exotic, honest to God. <laughs> but, but also, Kane is the same thing. I mean, Kane could accept a charisma implant from Al Gore. <laughs> <laughs> You wrote that um, Hillary Clinton is a former first lady, former U.S. senator, former secretary of state, former female, former human. Um, does one need to be human to run for president? <laughs> and what part of yourself do you have to kill? Well, I mean, look at what she's gone through. I mean, she was first lady. They, this is what they said about her when she was first late. She's a liar, she's a thief, she's a lesbian. She murdered Vince Foster with her bare hands <laughs> and then ate him. That's, <laughs> that's when she was first lady. Can you imagine saying anything like that about Laura Bush or, or Nancy Ray? Well, maybe Nancy Ray. <laughs> Dopey Donald says he wants a purple heart, which means he either wants to be wounded or killed. <laughs> I don't think he's alone. <laughs> We're in the 415 area code. <laughs> The, this is not the real world, all right? <laughs> San Francisco is a 49-square-mile circus in search of a tent. <laughs> it's easy to believe what Trump says because he has two positions on every issue. <laughs> so, you, well, I, I believe it. Well, yeah, he's pro-abortion, he's anti-abortion. He's gonna show his tax records. He's not gonna show his tax records. He's a close personal friend of Putin. He doesn't know who the guy is. <laughs> well, what's your comment on Trump as a stand-up comic? Well, it's- Or maybe performance artist. Yeah, yeah, I would go. I think, you know, there is, uh, anybody see the producers, you know, the <laughs> Melbourne? There's the producers theory in that, you know, he is trying to do the most outrageous campaign. You know, he's got a script about a Nazi and, and uh, you know, he refuses to, and he's, he's got 50% to Mrs. Cathcart and 50%, and he's just taking in the money. Because, you know, he's spending money at his own properties. At, like uh, Mar-a-Lago, he spent half a million, and he spent half a million at Trump Tower. He's paying himself to sleep in his own bed. This guy isn't as dumb as his hair looks. <laughs> no, I mean, eh, he's not self-funding. He lent his campaign money, and then uh, he's, he expects to be paid back. That's why he's soliciting donations to pay himself for the money he lent his campaign to buy stuff from himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is straight out of the catalog at Trump University, man. This is... <laughs> Note, I think both candidates are awful, but um, you both seem to be pro-Hillary. Please name two things she's accomplished um, without horrific side effects. 
Seriously, dude. Um, well, I agree both candidates will make you sick. One will give you intestinal cramps and the other Ebola. <laughs> and everybody knows what a libertarian is. That's a Democrat with a gun or a Republican that smokes pot. <laughs> So in the, this person writes, so in the Trump acceptance speech, he supported LGBTQ uh, rights. Yeah, but he couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> Did you see him read it off the tell it? L-G-B-T-Q? <laughs> and Q stands for questioning. Yeah. So that, I, I, I don't think he knew that. And so he was a little confused if that was real, because he knows another word that starts with Q. And he didn't think that should be part of it. So you could see all that oh. washed through his brain as he's reading the teleprompter going. <laughs> <laughs> as Obama called her, you know, she, uh, he called her the most qualified aspirant ever. And uh, it, it was funny because you had that, that great lineup, you know, you had. You had uh, Michelle Obama, who gave this wonderful speech, and I can't wait for Melania's spin on it. And then you had, <laughs> and then you had Bill, and remember what he did in 2012 for Barack, mm. and he just, he just kind of turned everything around for Barack, and Barack actually called him the, the Secretary of Splainin' Stuff. Uh, remember, that was the arithmetic speech. And so Michelle did for Hillary what Barack did for, uh, what Bill did for Barack, and, the, and then Barack, you know, what, what great speech. And then poor Hillary had to follow all these people, you know, which is like, I don't know, it's like following the Rolling Stones, you know, and, and, with, and they turned off your mic. Uh, so, yeah. And then, oh, it was, uh, and then Joe Biden, who, you know, used the word malarkey, and that is always endearing. Um, <laughs> but I thought she gave a great speech, although the white suit was a little much, you know. Yeah, it looked like she was a bride walking out to marry America, you know. Bill Clinton's whole speech was, you know, I met a girl in 1971. Uh, and so... <laughs> And then I met Hillary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the problem I had with Bernie was he has never had a negative ad run against him ever. Not once in Vermont, in any of his races, not once. And, and Hillary didn't dare throw out a negative ad, you know, because his supporters are like little people covered in fairy dust and you can't <laughs> touch them. Otherwise, you know, the oil from your fingers, well, they'll never be able to fly again. <laughs> Bernie, Bernie, who, who honeymooned in the Soviet Union? <laughs> well, it, it, it wasn't a honeymoon. Well, what was it? It was the first trip we took after we were married. <laughs> That's what a honeymoon is. <laughs> How would you describe the crowd at a Trump rally to someone who doesn't know anything about them? Um, skinheads with hair. Republican Congressman John Katko said that having to share the ballot with Trump is, quote, why God made scotch. <laughs> <laughs> but Bobby Jindal had a great line. Payush Bobby Jindal uh, said that, uh, of course, Trump's never read the Bible. He's not in the Bible. <laughs> I doubt if Ted Cruz could actually win a majority of the voices in his own head. <laughs> and oh, Donald Trump is a, he's destroyed the Republican Party. No, he didn't destroy. He lifted the rock they were hiding under. <laughs> but just vote. I mean, because democracy is a participatory sport. You're not supposed to watch it from the sidelines. Go out and exercise your electoral muscle. And also, if you don't vote, you can't bitch. <laughs> but then again, I'll pick up the slack. <laughs>